Hello everybody, welcome uh, to the Intermediate Atrial Flutter Lecture. My name is Matt and here we'll be talking about one of the most hardest and most difficult rhythms to actually interpret. So before we start, um, this course is meant to be for people who know exactly what atrial flutter is supposed to look like and people who understand what a reentry circuit rhythm is. Alright, now we're going to be going into an easy flutter. Here I'm going to show you some examples of some atrial flutter that even Helen Keller could interpret. Easy. Easy and easy. See how easy flutter is? That is the end. Obviously, I'm kidding uh, because we are going to go into spot how how to actually spot hidden flutter ways that you can that you future electrophysiologists out there can find. Here's your normal conduction pathways inside the heart. We should all remember from anatomy and physiology. The impulses start in the SA node and go to the AV node down the, his Purkinje system. Now what is interesting with the heart is that when the SA node is now operating well or as well as it should be, there are a bunch of small sites in the atria called the autom automaticity foci uh, that are a backup plan. Each one of these can create impulses on their own. These are shown here in blue. Now there is a highly irritable area that I put in red. You can see over there on the picture that's located in the right atrium. This is an important site because this is where our atrial flutter or originates. Here you can see atrial flutter going around and around and around in the right atrium. This is the re-entry circuit I was talking to you guys about. So now exactly what is atrial flutter? Atrial flutter is an atrial rhythm. Obviously atrial flutter, atrial, atrial rhythm. Uh, the atrial rate is usually 250 to 300 beats per minute. Just because the atrial rate is going that fast doesn't mean the ventricular rate is going that fast, obviously. Uh, this is a re-entry circuit, like I said in the previous slide. There are different types of atrial flutter, which are going to be clockwise and counterclockwise based off of which direction the impulses travel. This is uh, the intermediate lecture, so I, we won't go much into these at all. Now, obviously, we could see all the flutter waves in the third slide that I showed, but what happens if there are no beautiful flutter waves to find? Well, I'll teach you how to find hidden flutter waves in patients. Before we go into that, I need to mention something. If you saw my narrow complex tachycardias lecture, you'll remember that atrial flutter is a type of SVT, which is basically anything if it's going faster than 100 beats per minute. If you give a denison to these patients, you won't actually break the rhythm. You'll just slow it down to the, uh, so that way you can e more easily see the flutter waves. Now to teach you how to distinguish and find the hidden flutter waves without using a denison and make sure you don't give a denison to the wrong patients. Now before we go into finding these flutter waves, we need to know the best lead to find any atrial activity in. Is it going to be lead 2, which is going to be our favorite lead? Is it going to be lead 1, AVR? Do you think of some other kind of lead? Well, it is going to be V1. So if you watch my narrow complex tachycardia lecture, you'll remember this. Uh, this is your money lead. The reason this is is because ideally you're going to be placing this over the SA node or over the right atrium. This isn't a hundred percenter though, so you should always scour the whole 12 lead for any atrial activity. Now we can kind of go into finding those pesky little hidden flutter waves. So normally when I get atrial flutter, it is never those perfect and beautiful looking flutter waves that everyone sees in a typical flutter uh, that is mentioned in school and stuff like that. But let's see if you guys can find them in this example. Remember, look in V1 first and then look around the whole 12 lead. Well, let me make this a little bit easier for you guys. Now, let's zoom in on this just a little bit. Here you can see atrial activity right here in the middle of the QRS complex. Um, and this is going to be called the Bix rule. Now the Bix rule is named after a cardiologist named Harold Bix who stated that there, if there's a P wave or atrial activity located halfway between the two QRS complexes, there's a high probability that the P wave or atrial activity is going to be buried inside of the QRS complex. So let's put those hidden flutter waves in there now. You can see a slight upslurring at the beginning of the QRS complex, so right around here and here. And that's going to be where your hidden flutter waves are. So that is the Bix rule, and you guys can always keep that in your little diagnosis belt now. Now remember when I said that atrial flutter is usually an atrial rate of around 300 beats per minute? Well that will help us find them in V1. So back to the basics of ECG classes. Remember that one large box 
on an EKG, it's going to be a rate of 300 beats per minute. So if you have an atrial rate of 300 beats per minute, it will most likely be atrial flutter because nothing else does that. Atrial fibrillation is going to be too irregular and you don't really get that uh, discernible atrial activity that you see in atrial flutter. Because atrial flutter is a re-entry circuit, the atrial rate will be consistent. Now let us see the first example. Now let's look at V1. You see all the atrial activity right there? Well those are going to be your hidden flutter waves. The, H, the rate you can see here is going to be a rate around 300. If you look at the rest of the 12 lead, you won't really see any perfect little flutter waves anywhere, do you? Now to the next one. Now let's check out this one. Let's check out V1's atrial activity and you can see a little bit there. Uh, like I said before, look everywhere for atrial activity. Luckily in this example you can see some of the parts of the flutter waves inside the inferior leads which I'm highlighting in blue. And you can see that they're marching out at a consistent rate. So you can see they're all marching out at a rate of around 300 beats per minute here. Here's the third and final example. Let's look at V1. You can see a little bit there but not too much. Let's look around the whole 12 lead for more atrial activity. You can see some more atrial activity in the leads over here. I'll hide the, highlight them now so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. You can see the rate is pretty much ticking away at around 300 beats per minute. You can see that all here, one big one box. It's pretty much around 300, pretty consistent. You can see it hidden in here. You see that little biphasic look in T wave. It's not really a biphasic T wave. It is going to be just a flutter wave hitting right there, hitting right there, hitting right there. So you can also tell that because this one is different from this one, which is going to mean that this is going to be more of your flutter waves. Now, some people might think that this is third degree, but remember in a third degree, the atrial rate never really gets that high, and usually rates aren't, are you going to be usually very bradycardic. All right, here's a little overview. Remember that the first lead that you look at for atrial activity is going to be V1. This is your money lead, but this, like I said, is not a 100 percenter. So always scour the whole 12 lead for atrial activity. Make sure that you remember the Bix rule, which is if you see any atrial activity directly in the middle between two QRS complexes, most of the time there's going to be hidden atrial activity hidden inside of the QRS complexes. And finally, if the atrial rate is or around 300, it's going to be atrial flutter if it marches out perfectly. Just remember the atrial flutter is one of the most misdiagnosed rhythms out there, but with these few tricks, hopefully you guys can easily diagnose this now. Hope you guys enjoyed this lecture of atrial flutter, and you guys have a great day.